Are tampons one of the greatest sources of toxic heavy metals? A new study out of Columbia University and Cal Berkeley says yes. Researchers tested 30 different tampons and 14 different brands to detect 16 different metals across all samples, regardless of USDA organic or not. Can your tampons really be making you sick or is this just overblown? I'm gonna iron out the truth behind toxic tampons on this newest episode of Heal Thyself. Recent study has revealed that the presence of toxic heavy metals, including lead, arsenic, and cadmium in popular tampon brands. And this research that was published in the Journal of Environment International is the first of its kind to actually measure out heavy metals in specific tampons. Now, if you recall a few years ago, if you've been listening for a while, I actually did a show on tampons, but I didn't speak about heavy metals because there was no company really testing this and no independent study that tested this like this one. But what I spoke about was pesticides and dioxins. They're in low doses, but they're of concern, especially over time with how many tampons women out there are wearing. So when it came out that they were talking about heavy metals, this was actually a lot more concerning of a topic than dioxin and pesticides. And it's been creating a buzz everywhere. I actually went on TikTok and wanted to see how much buzz was around this. And there was actually young women out there doing posts saying, I'm never wearing tampons again. I'll just bleed out because of these heavy metals that are in tampons. And I'm going to talk about a little bit later about what's going on, what my conclusion is. Is this really worth the buzz? Are we overblowing it? Because it's really important to know, right? We want to come back to a place. It's like, is this worth the hype or is this just overblown? Like a lot of stuff in medicine is now. So the question is, is it legitimate? So today we're going to go over some tampon usage statistics. How absorbent is the vagina? Key findings of this study, some of the symptoms that you may feel if you're building up heavy metals in your body, all the way up till heavy metal toxicity. What is the author's conclusion after this study? What is my conclusion? And ultimately, what's my recommendation amongst all of this? So let's just get into the understanding of how often, you may not think about this, right? Because you'll think about it maybe monthly, how many tampons we're using the month but we don't think about the total numbers. Now, a survey by Statistica back in 2020 found that 60% of the respondents were aged 18 to 29, and 58% of those respondents were 30 to 49. And this is the usage of tampons here in the United States. Now, when it comes to frequency, on average, menstruating individuals change their tampons every four to eight hours, right? That might be the range that you even do it yourself. So this means that per person, they may use up to three to six tampons per day, depending on their menstrual period and the heaviness. But given this average number of cycles for five days translates to about 15 to 30 tampons per cycle. And if we amount this to annually, it's about 180 to 360 tampons per user. So it amounts or year to year. And think about when you started your period until how old you are and how many tampons have contacted the surface, the inner surface of your vagina. And that brings me to vaginal absorption. As you know, or may not know, the mucosal surface of the vagina is really absorbent. And there's a large mucosal surface area, and it's filled with a rich blood supply. And it's efficient for absorbing many substances, including medicines, but also including toxins. The mucosal lining has this epithelial layer of cells, and they actually facilitate the transport of certain substances across these tissues. In addition, the vagina pH is slightly acidic, right? It's about 3.8 to 4.5. Seven is around neutral, right? So it's, got, it's on the acidic side. And actually this acidity can also further affect the absorption of different substances. It can also lead to the, more of the leaching of substances that are put into the vagina. So enzymes are also present in this fluid of the vagina, and they actually also further influence the breakdown and the absorption of compounds. What else influences it? Your hormones. Where you are in your cycle can actually alter the permeability and the capacity to absorb in the vaginal tissue, especially estrogen. In particular, it increases the thickness and the vascularity of the vaginal lining, right? So now it's just rich in even more blood supply, more capillaries, that are enhancing the absorption. And the vagina is, again, a dense network of blood vessels. And there's a rapid uptake and absorption of substances into the bloodstream. And studies have shown that 
vaginal absorption can be as effective as oral administration, even more so for certain medications. And certain medications are actually administered vaginally, and sometimes it's even of greater use than oral administration. The vaginal route can be used for different hormone replacement therapies, antifungal treatments, contraceptives, right? All because of the absorption. They're utilizing the increased capability of absorption. But there are risks because of the high absorbency of the vaginal mucosa. That means that it can also absorb harmful substances, such as heavy metals and chemicals found in menstrual products, which we're going to talk about even more. So we really got to start thinking about the characteristic of the vaginal area, the surface area, those epithelial cells, the acidity, the hormones, and the blood vessels. This is a space where if what you're putting up there isn't clean and tested, there is a risk. So when we go back to this study, they basically looked and they said, there's 30 different tampons in front of us. There's 14 different brands, popular brands, and they weren't named in the study, but I would venture to guess that they're using most of these popular brands that you see at Target or Walmart or Walgreens. They're using these popular brands and they actually got organic and not organic ones. So my hunch would be that they got a lot of the organic ones that are readily available, not like this mom and pop organic tampon brand, but readily available in big stores. And they tested for 16 different metals. You know, we, we talk about heavy metals. And I usually talk about like lead, arsenic, cadmium, mercury. Those are some big ones, sometimes nickel, uh, but there's a lot. There's a lot of, of them. And, and zinc is actually one. You don't want to have too much zinc in your body. That in itself can be a toxic heavy metal. I've been thinking a lot about the products we use in our homes every single day, especially when it comes to cleaning. It can be really overwhelming. There's a lot of things out there, but there's a lot of greenwashing out there and you don't know which one is the best of the best and really trying to figure out what is safe for our families and what actually works. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about Molly Suds, one of the best companies out there, super powerful staple in the home. I mean it because Molly Suds offers a powerful laundry detergent and household cleaners that are made with safer ingredients. But here's a kicker. They're actually more cost effective per load than the leading brands out there. And that's why I brought them on the show because of the low cost, but the high quality. It's affordable. And what really stands out about Molly Suds is their commitment to safety. Their company was founded by a pediatric nurse and a mom who wanted to create cleaning products that were safe for her whole family. And now extending that to you. They've done their research. All their products are free from all those nasty chemicals that you might be worried about, the things like formaldehydes, the synthetic dyes, the fragrances, that can be endocrine, hormone disrupting, inflammatory, immune disrupting. They can affect fertility. They can affect the health of your child, especially when it comes to respiratory issues, causing allergic reactions and even more serious health issues. I love that Molly Suds is cruelty free. I love animals. You know that it's Leaping Bunny certified. It's vegan. The atrocities of cosmetics and personal care products and larger detergent industry, what they do to animals is, I would curse if I could, but I don't feel happy about that. Anyway, plus it's made right here in the United States. I know how important it is to keep our homes clean, but I also know we shouldn't have to compromise our health to do it. That's why I'm excited to share with you Molly Suds. You can actually pick up any Molly Suds product over there at Target, but if you wanna get a better deal as a Heal Thyself listener, I got something special for you. Right now, you can get an exclusive offer with your online order through my URL. You go to mollysuds.com slash DRG. That is M-O-L-L-Y-S-S-U-D-S dot com slash D-R-G. And use the code DRG at checkout for 20% off site-wide. I bet you didn't know this, but did you know that cookware and appliances are made with forever chemicals? That's why I'm always excited to tell you about our place. Our place is female founded. It's amazing. They're on a mission to create beautiful kitchen products that are not only gorgeous, but this is this one's out my alley. I like gorgeous, but this one's out my alley. Healthy and sustainable. I've been using their cookware for a while now. I gotta tell you, it's a game changer, especially when it comes to cast iron pans. And there was so much synchronicity when I was looking for a cast iron pan because I found our place and I knew that they were committed to reducing PFAS, which is really important because a lot of these pans out there are using this non-stick technology that is problematic. It used to be Teflon, and then they, they removed some of the PFAS, but now they use ones that are basically still disrupting. So it may not be PFAS, it may be PFOA. But regardless, there are thousands of different types of forever chemicals that they can be utilizing. So we really want to go with pans that are non-stick, but it's not only pans, it's also the air fryers. How many of you have air fryers or pressure cookers and don't even realize that it's lined 
with Teflon. That's a problem. You do not want to expose your food to that. I promise you. Go listen to any of my shows on nonstick cookware. The European Union is actually planning on banning them in 2025 because of their concerns about what it does to our health and our environment. Now, the ceramic coatings on these cast iron pans are not only toxin free, but they're durable. They are glass centric. That means that they're protected, they're durable, they're not leaching any heavy metals. And this is the biggest thing. I wanted to work with this company. After they told me and showed me their heavy metal reports, it was clean, it was good to go. They're well designed, they keep it under Proposition 65, which is really, really important, really stringent. And it's not just cookware. Our place has a whole range of toxic appliances that are changing the game. Like I said, it has an air fryer, you can crispy delicious foods without none of them harmful chemicals. My assistant actually just bought the air fryer from our place and she was telling me about how much she loves it. So if you're looking to upgrade your kitchen and say goodbye to forever chemicals, please do. I really can't recommend our place enough. And here's the best part. Right now, you can get a deal from their products. Go to fromourplace.com and enter the code DRG at checkout to receive 10% off site wide. That is F R O M O U R P L A C E.com. And the code is DRG. Now, all of the tampons that they tested had detectable levels of metals. And the study found that actually, there was no specific category that consistently had lower concentrations of metals. That means organic didn't necessarily have a lower concentration. They weren't necessarily better in terms of heavy metals. Organic will be in terms better with pesticides and dioxins, as which I was talking about on my last show. Yes, that's going to make sure that they're testing for that and it's clean. But remember, it's same thing for foods, not just tampons. Organic doesn't mean anything when it comes to heavy metals. So we have to be vigilant about heavy metals. This is why I do product reviews. They're, and that's why they're so heavy metal centric because brands aren't testing for this. They're not necessarily being transparent for it. And USD organic doesn't mean anything. So we actually have to be most vigilant in our work as consumers when it comes to heavy metals, especially if you're using something consistently, right? If you're eating it every day, every week, every morning before your workouts, if you're putting it in your vagina when you're bleeding, really, really, really important. Now, the levels of metals varied based on actually where the tampons were purchased, United States versus the European Union, the UK, and the type of materials were used and whether they were organic or non-organic. So lead, major, major heavy metal that has a lot of long-term effects. When, we think, when I think of lead, I think of neurological effects, concentration effects, mood changes, and lead concentrations were actually found to be higher in non-organic tampons, whereas the arsenic levels... And arsenic is one that can affect the whole body, especially the heart, especially the blood. Arsenic levels were higher in organic tampons, right? Which is, which is crazy. Remember, but what I, USDA organic doesn't mean heavy metals are low. So it, it may suggest that there's a different manufacturing process or the raw materials might be different, but metal contamination was found in both. Now, where is it coming from? Well, they could enter the tampons through different stages of production, right? It could come from the cotton used or the rayon used, especially in the conventional ones. Those are the primary materials that are used. And it, it can absorb from the water, the air, the soil. It can be added during manufacturing, especially when it comes to like dyes and pigments and antimicrobial treatments some of these tampons have. So remember, organic doesn't matter, right? So again, this is our vigilance and our work to ask if you really, and I'm going to give you my recommendations later, but you really have to be starting to hold companies accountable, especially if you're putting it into your body often. So what are some of the symptoms of heavy metal toxicity? Lead toxicity, really important to think about. I mentioned neurological effects. These are the when you're experiencing. And, and the thing is about heavy metals, it's not overnight. It's something that builds up in your system over time. Heavy metals are slow building. It's a slow drip. This is where you say, wow, I don't feel as I was 10 years ago, as blank I was. As, as vital, as sharp, as energized. It's heavy metals that really build up. They are true bioaccumulators. Something like BPA or even glyphosate. These pesticides, you're kind of peeing out pretty fast. But when it comes to heavy metals, this is something that stays for a long time. Just like PFAS, right? The forever chemicals. Heavy metals are really important for us to consider. And it should be at actually the highest point of our of our customer advocacy, heavy metals. So when it comes to lead toxicity, this is when we're looking at neurological effects, like you're becoming so irritable or your, your cognition is declining. You're not as sharp as you were before. Your memory's not as strong as it was before. You actually might be getting headaches. 
you actually might be getting really fatigued, but it also actually manifests as gastrointestinal issues, anything from abdominal pain to loss of appetite or nausea, or you're, you're starting to vomit. It could actually be for a toxicity of lead in the body, musculoskeletal issues, joint pain, muscle weakness. You're not as strong as you were. It could be in the blood. It could manifest as an anemia. And you go, wait, why do I have anemia? I'm eating healthy. Um, my iron levels look good, but no one's really talking about lead in the system. Another really big heavy metal that is found across the board and even in, um, in tampons could be mercury. And this is the ones where we're talking about the fillings in the teeth, but also different heavy mercury fish like tuna, for example, swordfish, but mercury, yeah, that's usually where we're finding it, right? Where that's how we're being exposed to it. And that's more neurological things like memory loss, uh, headaches again, cognition issues. Also, mercury has a psychological effect, mood swings, irritability, nervousness, emotional disturbances. If I remember correctly, I think it was mercury, uh, Alice in Wonderland, Mad Hatter, and he's wearing this hat and he's cuckoo and crazy. It actually was based on the case report of a production line of hat makers, some hat brand many years ago, probably in the mid 19, early 1900s, where the people I think who were testing it or working with the materials for the felt were being exposed to high levels of mercury. If I'm right, it's mercury. And it was causing psychological changes like, like that anxiety or mood swings or just changes and just like they're so irritable and then they're happy and then they're, they're kind of crazy. And that's where Mad Hatter came from. It was actually the, the, the hatters, the hat makers who were going mad from making the hat, but it's actually the root of it was because of heavy metal toxicity. Pretty sure it was mercury, heavy metal toxicity. So think about that, right? It does affect, and they were using it in high doses and they were being exposed to it in high doses. But for us, we still have to think about the, how are we being affected more over time? So yeah, mercury can affect also your kidneys. It, it can have a metallic taste in the mouth, uh, oral issues like gingivitis. Then we have things like arsenic that's found in in uh, brown rice, it's found in different types of uh, foods that are coming from the ground, different sort of uh, vegetable powders, uh, could be maybe in green powders. Arsenic is, is one that, that it's not often found. Uh, brown rice is a big one where you, you will find it, but that can cause dermatological issues. That's where we start seeing issues in the skin, issues in the nails, gastrointestinal issues, nausea, vomiting, abdominal issues, neurological is one thing across the board that heavy metals have an affinity for, especially the heart and the nervous system. So this is where you're going to get numbness and tingling in the hands and the feet, confusion, again, cardiovascular issues, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, respiratory issues, affecting your kidneys, affecting your lungs. These are all heavy metals that are generally going to affect you. They affect your immune system across the board, increase your susceptibility to infections. They affect hormones. We always have to think about heavy metals having affinity for the whole system. Some heavy metals have an affinity for other parts, some other ones, but really we think neurological, immune, fertility, some diseases connected to heavy metal exposure, things like dementia, infertility, diabetes, cancer. We don't talk about heavy metals in the context of these. That's crazy because they are actual drivers of these issues. So the researchers do this study and they conclude that basically we need stricter regulation. We need heavy metal testing. There needs to be comprehensive testing for these manufacturers to ensure actually these menstrual products are safe. And this is really important for you all to understand. If you're using tampons, if you're using tampons, you got to start looking for a better substitute right now. It, this, it's not like, yeah, one more tampon's not going to kill you, but how long have you been using tampons? And how often do you plan on using them? And are you bringing more awareness about the products that you're using? It's really, really important. And I don't want to, you know, usually there's a lot of headlines that are really sensationalized, but this isn't one of them because heavy metals are real and they build up, even if they're in really low doses in the tampons, over the life of you using these tampons every month, annually, up to 300 different types of uh, 300 tampon exposures. Now we have to really think about it. And it's going to the vagina. It's not, it's not like something that's resting on your skin. It's going in your vagina. My conclusion is that is it's time for us to be vigilant for men, for your wives, for your daughters, women out there, for yourselves, for your loved ones, for your moms, for your sisters. We got to make a change when it comes to tampons. And years ago, I mentioned that like, yeah, tampons, if it's not organic, isn't the healthiest thing. 
uh, we're being exposed to low levels of pesticides and dioxins. Okay. Uh, our body's resilient and we'll probably just detox it out. Maybe some of us are really poor constitutions and sluggish and backed up and maybe it won't. Not as fast. But when it comes to heavy metals, it's a different animal. It's a different animal. That's it. So we really, really have to now, now is the time because of this study to really start considering how important it is to change your tampon regimen. And this is my recommendation. You actually should move to a silicone cup. And right now, it is the safer change, right? So if you've been thinking about it, here's your cue to do it. I hope that the permission is there or the, the, the inspiration is there, whatever it is that you're looking for. If it's something you've been using, great. Why? Well, silicone cups are 100% medical grade silicon. They are safe for prolonged contact with the body unless you have an allergic reaction to it. You don't want to get any cups that aren't stated, clearly stated to be medical grade and safe for menstrual use. There might be brands jumping on this right now and not making quality ones. You want to get medical grade safe for menstrual use. You want to get one that fits. There's different sizes and everyone's made different. There's variations in the, the vaginal depth, the cervical height. There's variations on how much your menstrual flow is every month. So it's really important to get the right size. So start testing. There's smaller, medium sizes. Those are typically for anyone who's under 30, who hasn't given birth. Uh, while there's also large sizes for those over 30 or who have given birth. Firmness. Play around with the firmness. See how the cup affects you. Softer cups might be more comfortable, but it may be harder to insert. And, and open up while firmer ones are easier to insert and even easier to take out. Uh, they might be more reliable. So really start playing around because I can't speak on this. I've never used it. I never will use it, but I know that there's some women out there who like it. The shape and design you always want to consider too. You want to think about the rim, the body and the stem. If you just Google it right now, how they look, some cups have uh, like a longer stem and it's easier to just remove. Others have shorter ones, some no stem for comfort. So again, this is individualized to you based on your variables. Look at the features around there, right? Some have air holes around the rim and maybe that creates a better suction. Some of them don't. But look for a brand that has quality reputation, quality for comfort, quality. They're like, where you're reading the reviews and they're like, this is the best thing. It's so much better than the tampon I've been using. And again, it's medical grade main, made for menstrual usage. And you want to make sure they have clear information about their manufacturing process, the materials they use, 100% medical grade, safety certifications. It's not just some brand that is shady, that has a shady website. You, it, this is going into your body. It's not going on your body. It's going inside of your body and you want to make sure you have quality. Check the reviews, the testimonials, gauge the effectiveness, the comfort from other people, what they're saying, as well as making sure they have integrity as a brand. Make sure it's easy to clean, easy to be sterilized with boiling water. Um, some brands actually give you cleaning kits. Make sure the cleaning kits aren't made of like toxic fragrances and toxic dyes. And if you can just boil it yourself with with distilled water or, or reverse osmosis water, do that yourself. Look, I have no affiliation with these brands. I just know that these are popular, well-established ones. Go look at these and go look at other ones. Diva Cup, again, I'm not getting paid out of that. None of this. Diva Cup is one of the most well-known used ones out there. It has great reviews, 100% medical grade silicon different sizes. Uh, I hear it's smooth. I hear it's flexible. It's got a good reputation, lots of good reviews. Um, there's Lunette. That's another one. Same thing, medical grade. I checked on it. Different sizes, different colors, different features. They have the soft, flexible comfort. They have easy grip stems, variety of colors, good reputation. There's a salt cup. Um, that's a soft medical grade one. It's designed to be comfortable. Again, quality. You want quality. You want quality. Um, they have actually uh, ultra soft silicone for maximum comfort. Apparently, this one has a really nice design. I don't know. Check it out. Uh, but they're eco-friendly. They have eco-friendly practices. They have a good social mission. I love supporting companies like that. Moon Cup. That's another really popular one. Check the sizing. Check the design. It's made out of hypoallergenic silicone, so it should be good for everyone. Good reputation. The check out Me Luna, another really quality one. Um, different sizes, good features. Uh, that's that's a really popular one that I know that I came across. But really, look, th that's only a few brands. Look up whatever brands. Make sure, again, these are the rules. Integrity of the company, good social mission, using medical-grade silicon, made for menstrual usage, uh, pluses or like safety certifications, 
pluses are we third party tests pluses are companies that are like get in touch with us we'll tell you anything those are huge pluses pluses if it's it's under proposition 65 because now you know that it's heavy metal levels are low and most likely silicon won't have any heavy metals but still it's really nice if a company is testing for the presence of heavy metals anyway if you are absolutely against using cups and you have to use tampons it is really now important after this study to call the company and say hi i understand that there was a study that showed that there are heavy metals in tampons and i am concerned and i want to support this company does this company test for heavy metals in the tampons Yes, absolutely. We'd love to share that with you. Here is a third-party testing. Ask them this. Is this tampon company under Proposition 65 for heavy metals? If they say yes, we don't have to put a Proposition 65 label on any of our products because we regularly test multiple batches per year that ensure us to be under Proposition 65. That is good. Proposition 65 is a really stringent, uh, almost overly stringent, standardization over here in California on for chemicals and heavy metals. But really, I just use it for companies. I, if, if a company says we're under Proposition 65, I know that they test for heavy metals and it's really low and I don't have to worry much. I still look at the testing, but I still don't have to worry much. Ask, if we're at the point right now, ask your tampon company if it's under Proposition 65. Uh, DM me, let me know what you see. I would love to know. I would love to know a company, uh, a tampon company that, that says, yes, we're one of the best out there. I haven't found it yet, but also I, I haven't put in hours and hours of research. All I know is I'm just speaking about what the study showed, what my concern is, and what my better alternative is. But ultimately, it's your body. It's your choice. Choose what is right for you. I really hope this show was informative for you. Thank you so much for listening. I love you all.